This is one of those cases where I wish I could go back and work it again. It just becomes part of you, you know? I know the ins and the outs. I know the people. One of them that I feel strongly did this is still alive. Once somebody uses an attorney, we're not able to talk to them anymore. They know the penalty for being found. They know by opening their mouths and being connected to this, uh, they're gonna go down. One year has passed. Solving the crime remains elusive. The police now believe this. There are more innocent victims doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. The wrong thing was agreeing to keep this safe for a friend. The safe belonged to this man, 31-year-old Richard Ricky McCarthy, a childhood acquaintance of Michael Jacobs, and the man police believe holds the key to the killings. We really need to locate him, dead or alive. I remember going to his house, leaving notes, looking for him. But again, since I didn't see him like every day or every week, it took a long time for it to sink in. You know, I did everything I could possibly, uh, reached out to other agencies when I had information. It just didn't pan out. We just couldn't find where his remains were. It doesn't make any difference to me what a person's involved in. They're still a victim. They're still somebody's son or brother or father. I honestly still believed or wanted to believe that at some point he was going, I was going to hear a motorcycle. Every time I heard one even, I would run and look out the window or stop and, and go see. So I think it took a long time before I really accepted that he was not coming back. It's been a very frustrating experience to see an entire family, a mother, father, and their nine-year-old daughter murdered seemingly senselessly just because of a really an act of good Samaritanism. That was so unfair. You cannot kill a child. And the way later that when I went through and read reports that Mickey and Marcy were killed, ugh, I can't. I still can't stomach it. I can't stomach it. And I guess maybe I can't stomach it because the other part to that is that I know my father met a similar fate. You know, if I could redo Things, there are things I would have done and said. I wish I could have helped them. You never, you just don't really know people. I think the only thing frustrating for me on the case is that I'm not currently working it. I can see right in my head. I know, I can see exactly what took place. How the suspects entered, how they left. I know all that. You know, I know exactly how it was. You know, more work needs to be done on the case. You know, it demands it, that you go back out and talk to these people. That's how you're gonna find out. And you never know, after 30 years, maybe somebody just gets exhausted and they just say, hey, okay, here's what happened. My name is Pat Higgins. I'm a cold case investigator for the Sacramento Police Department. It's the ultimate crime as far as, you know, somebody's been killed and the person thinks they got away with it and the fact that you know, people are interested to know that years, decades later, the killers can be brought to justice after they've thought they escaped. I made a little headway when I went back in cold case, talking to a person, really shed a lot of light on some of the people that were involved. Usually in a case where you have one suspect, they don't say anything, and it makes it very difficult to learn anything. When you have more than one suspect, people talk. People start saying things. That becomes a break for law enforcement because someone's always talking about something. We all grew up together. All of us, we all knew each other, okay? And I didn't know anybody that would do such a horrific thing. I would have never had anything to do with anybody that would do something like that. But it's frightening to think that you could have, could have been somebody I know. You don't know. I still don't know. 
I hope to God it wasn't anybody I know, but somebody knew who did it. I turned over every stone. I went everywhere. I knocked on a lot of doors, made a lot of people uncomfortable, especially when you're dealing with people in the biker world. Detectives show up on your doorstep and, and they don't like it. But uh, I could care less whether they did or they didn't. I just needed to get information. How many people do you believe were involved in this case? It would just be a guess, but I would say at least three. Why can you clearly say there's more than one? Just it seems on the sequencing, or on how it is to have one victim killed in the garage, and then a struggle inside with Marcy, and then the little girl being in the bedroom. It just seems like it'd be somewhat difficult to, for one person to carry out all three of those crimes. Like I said, we have a person of interest, at least one person of interest that I know is very worried about this case. The purpose of this press conference is to solicit your help. We want to solve a crime. And we believe the killers are still out there. And we want to offer a $50,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and prosecution of those responsible for Marcy and her, fa her family's murder. Since this summer, we've uh, received a lot of information that substantially moved the case forward. And like I said, I think the biggest impediment now is the new law. Prior to this, is there was a felony murder rule. If you went in and were involved in a murder during another ro another crime, such as a robbery, a home invasion, you be going inside and being a participant in that was enough. We didn't have to prove, you know, that you were the shooter. What that presents, though, in this case, is all the witnesses were killed. Even though we have people of interest, how do we show that they're major participants? So it's a major major issue for the prosecution of homicides, especially cold case homicides when you have multiple people involved. After we turned the house back over to the surviving parts of the family, I've probably driven by here a hundred times over the years. You drive by and see if you if it brings back any other thoughts of, could I have done this, or should I have looked at this, or sometimes it'll shake your mind to give you a new idea of something to look at, or a different angle. You gotta get out. You can't let these cases sit and gather dust. You have to start shaking doorknobs, start contacting people. You might contact the same person three or four times. Just ask them, hey, can you think of anything that we didn't talk about before? That's what's got to be done, especially on this case. Some of my friends from that era has told me, you know, you're opening up a whole can of worms, something bad could happen to you. And I just want to say that I have the strength to still talk and remember them and remember them for who they were and not the last days of their life and the choices they made. You can't hold that against them. I just keep on going back to their daughter. She had no say. And that, that just really bothers me. And to meet such a horrible end, I, I still just, who would do that to a little kid? That's just horrible. I think I did feel guilt for a while. Like I really did think that I could have saved her life. And so when I would have memories of it, I was like, oh God, there's that, that regret. I feel that somebody out there that's probably watching this right now has the last piece of this puzzle. And a lot of us, their family, their friends, we've waited a long time. And I would like that person to step up. They've held dark secret for a long time. And if they don't, you know, I hope they rot in hell with the rest of them. I hope somebody comes forward. You know, somebody that knows something, somebody comes forward and shares enough information that the folks responsible for this are brought to justice. You know, I mean, if you're an associate or if you're a friend, why wouldn't you cooperate in this case? 
unless you have something to hide. You know who you are, and you know we're gonna get you eventually. It'd be better if you just came and talked to us and told us your side of the story. So if they're watching this, what would you say to them? Get ready for a knock on your door sooner or later, because it's gonna happen sooner or later.